I'm somewhat somewhat suspicious uh, of his line. I guess he can have pocket tens. I'm just trying to think of like hands that make sense. What ten x makes any sense <laughs> given the line he took? I'm not sure there are a ton of them. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. You have to be uh, you kind of have to be going a little crazy to uh, to show up with a bluff there. Also, in terms of like hands that I can have, um, I think Ace King is actually pretty far down by the river. Uh, we'll have plenty of two pairs and a few 10x. Most of our 10x will probably be uh, about the river. Um, here, I like call with the nut gut shot and backdoor. Especially, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna hit it, you definitely want to continue. And yeah, I think. I think raise is just the best play. Um, we would like to get as much money in as possible. Sizing wise, I don't know. I think we want to go big ish. Have you or BRCBC done much MDA on Bodog? Cool that you get the whole cards. Yeah, so that's one of the things that uh, BRPC is best known for is uh, they do a lot with MDA. And yeah, I would say overall it's been extremely useful. That is one terrible river. Um, I'm going to go with the slightly smaller bet. I'm still going to stack off if he jams, even though I don't expect it to do very well. Uh, but I think it's, I mean, it's, it's getting tough to call with worse. Uh, he snapped, and so we uh, got called by worse. Let's see. Wow. Queen Jack off. Yeah. Um, I think on that, that particular, on most, on basically every river, I was going to jam. But on the one that completes the draw, <laughs> the only remaining draw, you know, the backdoor draw, and... Uh, and, I mean, it's very hard for him to have a set, obviously, in that line, but he can maybe have some two pairs. I don't know. Just a bizarre spot. Maybe I should just stick it in. I mean, if the guy's going to call Queen Jack, he's obviously uh, not great. <laughs> but, yeah, sorry, what was I saying? MDA. Um, yes, it is cool that you get to see the whole cards. And makes makes the whole MDA process much more effective um, because there's always a problem with MDA where you only get, if you only get to see the hands that go to showdown, there's some huge bias there uh, in what hands you get to see. Right, hands that go to showdown tend to be tend to be stronger than hands that don't, um, and so there are some lines where if you don't get to see all the whole card information, then the the data you're getting is not necessarily super useful. So yes, BRPC has done a lot with MDA, uh, and that's I think one of the big uh, one of the big reasons why they've been so successful. But yeah, I felt like I felt like in that other hand that the slightly smaller bet will get called by more by more hands, and like may, maybe once in a blue moon he does something completely insane. By the if he jams, um, if he jams, oh, sorry, let me look at this one. Uh, I think my hand will just be very close to beer check. Um, maybe every once in a while he's doing something crazy, and I was going to get stacked by the by the huge hands anyways. So. What is my bankroll on Bavada? I don't know. Seems like I probably shouldn't answer, <laughs> answer that one. Um, but I do I do keep, you know, enough on there that I'm not going to have to reload, but uh, have have withdrawn enough that, you know, if I ever needed to reload, that's fine. Um, it's I guess the interesting part of that question is, like, when I played on ACR, I always felt a little weird um, because... From what I knew, it was like it's a pretty sketch, somewhat sketchy illegality wise too. And maybe actually, maybe that's true of Bodog too. I haven't looked into it enough. Um, and so in that case, like you, you don't really want to take put, keep too much on there. And so I was actually the only reason I have any Bitcoin uh, is because I, that was the only way I could figure out how to withdraw from Bodog. Um, this will be big better check against someone good versus shorter stack. I'm just gonna uh, go with small bet and here. I think pretty easy check fold. Um, so the only reason I have any Bitcoin is because I started with, you know, I did not want to keep more than like 10 buy-ins or whatever on uh, on ACR. So I was I was withdrawing uh, for that. But I haven't thought about it too much. I'm under the impression it's maybe less sketchy. But as I say that, I'm, I'm doubting myself a little bit. Um, and so yeah, maybe maybe you shouldn't keep a ton on there. They have they do Bitcoin as well. So maybe I uh, maybe I should look to keep a little less. But I don't know. It's kind of a pain doing the doing the withdrawals and the and the deposits and the, uh, you know, you, you can't be so sure that the money you take out in Bitcoin is still going to be worth what it once was. I'm curious, actually, about you. 
how do you read your randomizer? So, you know, when I first started using a randomizer, I, I thought there was only one way and I was blown away when I found people doing the opposite thing. So what I do is, so let's say with this, I mean, this is a pure, let me, sorry, let me, let me play these two hands and then I'll tell you. Uh, I think here, small, why is nothing working? Um, say I want to raise 10% and call the rest. If the number is 10 or lower, then I raise. Um, and so low numbers are aggressive. And so I basically decide how often I want to do, that's unfortunate, how often I want to do uh, the aggressive option. And then I check if the number is lower than that. To me, that just seems like the logical one. It's like, I always find it insane when someone says, I want to raise 20% of the time. So if I rolled an 80 or higher, you know, and like each time you have to, you have to do one extra calculation, don't you? Like you have to do the 100 minus 20. And of course, I mean, that's not, you know, not some super brain intensive thing, but why don't I just look at the number and know right away? And I don't know. I don't understand why you'd want to have to do these conversions. So here's what I'm talking about where, I don't know, sometimes Bodog just doesn't want to let me reload. Um, I assume it will happen soon. If it doesn't, I will, uh, I will leave the table and come back. Here, I think just going big, big versus weaker player is going to be best. Not on that river. Uh, on that river, I actually quite like block. I think we still get called by some weaker spades. Uh, I will just fold to a raise. And here versus 3x on a 50, I will call, but I don't think it's a super high beat call versus 3x. Yeah, villain had king nine with the nine of spades. Oh, there it goes. Well, <laughs> if you're curious about my curious about my bankroll, there's your answer. Um, but yeah, since I've since I play with BRPC, they handle all that, um, and so there are times I withdraw uh, based on what they tell me. Uh, both okay here. I tend to do a lot of checking in these limp pots just because I think people stab all the time. Um, and yeah, I think our hand is good enough that I'm going to check raise and probably go for three relatively small streets. Um, yeah, I think that's just going to play well versus population. And here, a very high frequency four bet. And we rolled it. On that run out, we will not go for three streets. I think just check fold is the way to go here. And obviously, easy fold. Yeah, I think even versus half bot. I mean, I can't imagine ever getting here with a worse hand than this. And very credible for him to have many, many better hands. So I'm just going to fold and not think too much about it. Always disappointing when the reload doesn't work and you, you have top set, but can't complain too much. So in theory, there might be a few slow plays here, but I'm just going to err on the side of betting. And then I quite like check raise here. Again, board I'm going to check quite often. Um, you can play some big bets as well, but on 72, I think pretty clear check and going to be a very high frequency raise. <laughs> this time, this time we're going to click the button so we don't uh, we don't repeat our repeat our check fold from the uh, from the jack sander there. Keep about 25 pints on ACR. I think that makes sense. It's it's the, like there's some kind of balancing act, right, between having enough where you're not constantly having to make transactions and not having so much that if something something bad happens with the site that, you know, it's a disaster. <laughs> Zelder says exactly my point. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine going the other way. I started doing the RNG the wrong way. Well, so I think that's a perfectly valid point, too. Um, deeper, I would call here for sure. I mean, I have no idea what I'm doing against 35 big blind stacks. Feels close. I will fold. Um, I mean, once you've started doing it one way, I, I agree. If, if that's the way you started, you probably might as well just stick with it. Like I said, you know, you're probably faster at this point at going, okay, I'm going to raise 20%, I need an 80. Then you are, you know, now the extra step would be <laughs> converting back to 20. Um, 
But if, if you were starting from the start, you definitely, definitely go that way. And then it's, I also find it's nice because you can be like, you know, say you have some mixed hand that's mixed all three and it's, you know, 20% raise, 30% call, 50% fold. To me, at least, it's pretty intuitive that, that sub 50, uh, I'm not folding and then, you know, sub 20, I'm raising and the rest I'm, I'm calling. I can't say there's a ton of spots where I actually use that, but it's there if I need it. Um, so my hand would have been, uh, I think I continue in a decent frequency raise here. We rolled low, so we'll bet. I think this hand can do either. I would probably err on the side of betting this one. It's got a lot of nice, a lot of nice turns. And I think the king highs will be the hands that do the least betting on this board, uh, and probably not a board where we want to be see betting super often. And again, I don't think, I don't think the king highs are going to do much betting. Uh, so I'm just going to check. And we could potentially raise our hand, but I'm not going to this time. Flopping all kinds of sets. A uh, board where I want to use the bigger size. I've been lazy a couple times. And this is always one of the things you have to be uh, careful of, is it's easy to be lazy and see bet small uh, when you don't have it. And then, you know, <laughs> when I have a set, uh, really notice and go for it. That is a huge raise size. Uh, I'm just going to call. And yeah, I don't, I don't think I should play any raises versus that size. So I will not. And if he bets turn on this turn, I probably just stick the money in. Versus small blind, I don't do any size ups. I have no idea what he's doing, but we have a set. That's a nice hold. Here, I think I is just strong enough to keep betting. Easy call. Hmm. Weird line by my opponent. Very difficult to have a three. They feel skeptical. I'm going to call it. This might be bad, but okay. <laughs> it's good versus that guy. Uh, I don't know. I, I really, one thing I would like to do is, uh, is every time I get that skeptical feeling and call, uh, <laughs> to keep track of that in some way. Because it's easy to there be like, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had, I can't remember which stream it was, but I got absolutely owned by uh, by a guy who plays, I've seen him as high as, uh, as, high as I think I've seen him in, sitting in 510 games, not that I was playing in those, um, but owned in a spot where it's just like, you know, I feel suspicious and I make some super, super light call and he, you know, his, his value betting thing is just thin and has just completely owned me. Um, and so it's hard to know. It's hard to know how often those feelings are correct. That one, that one just felt off. When I started, I wasn't thinking about the frequencies first, I think. Right. Yeah, I mean, so, I and I think I have the same problem, is that there's a tendency to over-rely on the randomizer. And so one thing I've considered, and I don't know how easy it is to do, but I think I would actually rather not have it here um, and have to click in order to get it. Because it's very easy to see, like, well, 44 is not a good example, but to see, like, 8 and be like, okay, I'm gonna going to be aggressive here. But I think a much better approach is to think about my hand. What does my hand want to do? Um, and then only in those situations where it's like, okay, I think this hand will mix. Then you click the button and see. Instead of getting biased by kind of seeing a number right away and then uh, going from there. So this hand, low frequency 3-bet. Um, not on 42. And check fold here. But yeah, I think, I think most of the time you are better off... Um, Good board for me. I think it makes sense to have some blocks and some big bets. Uh, this hand works pretty well as a big bet. Probably I can go even a little bigger. And very good river. We are uh, doing well there. So I think over bet's going to be the main going to be the main size here. Do I assume that the player who flats the small blind is a fish? So this on a four, I'm going to bet, and I think our size tends to be. No, actually, I think on low low, I think it's small. This is a tough question. I would say hesitantly yes. <laughs> um, I think just basic, not quite pure check, but very high frequency check here. Um, I think they are much more likely to be a fish having flatted the big, the small bind, but definitely it's not it's not a play that's incorrect. And the more 
the more you use solvers, the more you see it happening often, um, especially versus smaller sizes. So I think it's a mistake to immediately think fish when you see a guy flat the small blind, but it does it does skew me somewhat in that in that direction. Um, obviously, you know, on a, on a site like Stars, where you have some stats, um, you can use those to help decide. Here again, I think this hand is going to play very similarly to the king high. I think we can bet sometimes, um, but I think we want some checks. And, and when you have a pair, I think it makes more sense to check. Um, I mean, this, this is one of those spots where it's like, on the one hand, I just want to bomb it because I think he never has a seven and he'll fold sometimes. On the other hand, we also never have a seven. I would bluff all my sevens somewhere along the way. Um, and so you don't, you probably don't want to go around just always, you know, 2x potting when you never, <laughs> you never have that hand. So, I don't know, weird spot. We'll have a few sevens. I mean, there are some seven X hands I would play that way, um, but we don't have a lot, and so you probably don't want to be always bluffing there. Also, like if your opponent just never folds, you're just losing a bit to rake. So, do I assume? Sorry, I got super sidetracked there. Do I assume they're a fish? No, but I definitely kind of skew it slightly towards them being a fish, um, and I am, yeah, kind of on the lookout for other reasons to think they are or are not. Tens can go both ways, uh, but on an eighty check. Again, can go both ways. Um, we rolled low, so we will bet. I don't think we use any big bets here. Maybe some slightly bigger bets than this, but uh, I don't think there will be anything very large. And you know, it's funny. We've actually seen a lot of showdowns uh, of people flat calling the small blind. <laughs> I think like every single one of them has been some random ace x, uh, including hands as strong as ace jack suited. This can go both ways. Um, on a twenty eight, I will four bet but you can definitely call as well. But yeah, I think the more, like I think as time goes by, I might, I might revise that uh, idea. I think if you, if you rewind maybe even three months, but definitely like six to nine months, almost every reg was playing three better fold from the small blind. And um, and yeah, so I think at that point, at that point, I think it was a pretty strong read, not far from guaranteed, but, but a pretty strong read. And I think it's getting less and less strong. Um, I don't have like hard data to back that up, but I, I do feel like I've seen some guys who I, I think of as good regulars, uh, flatting more in the small blind. And then, you know, you start to also see some hands where it's like, okay, that, that makes sense as a flat. I've seen some Sims where flatting happens. And, you know, those are the types of hands that, that do some flatting. Not, not all the hands we've seen here, but some of them. Um, and yeah, so I think this read about small blind flat is a fish is getting less and less good over time. Thinking of putting it on a click to have it in stars caption, so just automatic. Yeah, so I have it in stars caption too as, a, as an auto update, like when it's my turn, it rolls. But I think it was, I think it was a Clanty video I saw where he was talking through his entire hand and then clicking. I think versus half pot, this hand is actually very close. Um, and maybe this is even a touch loose versus cutoff. Versus small, pure continue. And versus like three quarters, uh, definitely pure fold. And versus half, I just kind of split the difference. I haven't studied, I haven't studied versus half specifically. But very easy fold on the turn. Uh, among the worst hands we can have. But yeah, it was Clanty who who was uh, talking through the whole hand and then rolling, and I I just think I just think that's clearly better. Uh, very high C bet board, so we will C bet. Don't think our hand really does much on this turn. We will call one blind, and I will call one blind again on the river. But uh, if he bets any reasonable size. I think we fold. And yeah, very happy to check behind. I expect to lose the vast majority of the time. Nice. I mean, his hand is just, just a bluff. I don't know. Yeah, I think, I mean, his hand is not well played. <laughs> I think flop, flop's going to be a reasonably high frequency raise. Turn, turn's not a thing, but if you do, if you do get to the river that way, your hand just just probably needs to bluff. We 
But yeah, I haven't, I don't know in Jerogen if there is a, a refresh after move to mouse pointer. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's possible to do it on a, I mean, I know when I click it can go, but it, it, if I want it to be blank until I click, that I'm not so sure about. So maybe actually, maybe I should just get rid of, make it not do that, and then and then I'll click it when I want it. All right, I'm gonna try that the rest of the session. And I, I mean, the other thing, watching that that Clanny video, if you're if you're a Run It Ones Elite member, um, highly recommend his live play. Um, so this is like a 20, 15 percent three bet for me here. Um, I highly recommend his his life his. I think it was his last live play video. I commented on it, so you can check the. You can check it, but his thought process is extremely impressive in game. Like while he's got these high stakes tables going, just very clear. Uh, it takes his time and then clicks. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think in part it's because I play so much Zoom that you just get into the click, 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 uh, go, go, go. And I don't think it's great. I don't think it's great. Uh, so this hand, pure call, I believe. But let's roll anyways. Very easy check fold. Yeah, don't think there's anything to do here but fold. Weird play by my opponent. Um, I think just call. I, I do like some some raises versus this line, but I think our hand has enough kind of enough good turns and enough showdown value that I, I would rather just call this. And you know, I'd raise hands like queen jack, queen nine, jack nine, stuff like that. Again, I'm not I'm not thrilled with this run out. If he bets one, I probably call. If he bets more, I probably fold. Not a good not a good river. Yeah, I think I just fold here. Um, so I have looked a little bit at mono boards, and there is a lot of this. If you let Solver use these tiny bets, uh, it really likes these one big blind bets on the mono boards. So it's something I've been experimenting with a little bit. I have played against it a couple of times, and immediately felt like I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think it's a, if you learn what you're doing in that line, I think it can be pretty effective. I have seen, I mean, on the one hand, I, I feel like people are probably overfolding. Um, certainly by no means a piercy bet. 73, we will check. It's easy to get carried away on these ace middle middle boards. Uh, pretty strong boards for the big blind. Uh, you don't want to get carried away uh, see betting range here, I don't think. In these positions, anyway. That's a weird run out. <laughs> these are these are funny spots because this is a this is a very popular bluff line. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to make a hero call, but ah, nice bet. I, I think his turn bet's not good at all, uh, but good good river bet. Mm -hmm. 